This is the EWN Podcast Network. Welcome to Late Boomers, our podcast guide to creating your third act with style, power, and impact. Hi, I'm Kathy Worthington. And I'm Mary Elkins. Join us as we bring you conversations with successful entrepreneurs, entertainers, and people with vision who are making a difference in the world. Everyone has a story, and we'll take you along for the ride on each interview, recounting the journey our guests have taken to get where they are, inspiring you to create your own path to success. Let's get started. Hello, I'm Kathy Worthington. Welcome to our latest episode of Late Boomers. Today, our guest is Dan Clouser, author, blogger, host of the podcast Journey of My Mother's Son, speaker and consultant. He's completed three books with more on the way. And I'm Mary Elkins. Dan and his wife, Sandy, and their golden retriever, Euclid, traveled the country in their RV doing volunteer work and speaking engagements and writing and podcasting. We will, we will be hearing all about how that came to be. Welcome, Dan. Thank you. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Tell us about your background and what you did in your other life before traveling in your RV. Absolutely. So for 30 years, I coached uh, baseball and softball and ran a youth nonprofit sports organization. And uh, you know, if you would have talked to me in 2018, I would have told you that I would probably die on a baseball field or at our sports complex that we ran. And uh, that all changed in in 2019 when I took a couple solo trips, um, one from Pennsylvania to Texas, another one from Pennsylvania to Orlando, Florida. And, uh, you know, really got this feeling of serenity as I was traveling. And, uh, you know, got back from those trips and ran it by my wife, whether she thought it would be a a good idea to sell our house and all of our stuff and buy an RV and travel throughout the country. And she thought I'd completely lost my mind. Um, (laughs) And uh, after a while, she finally was convinced to do it. She had some stuff happening professionally that that doors weren't opening. Um, So she she decided, you know what, I'm, I'm into this. Let's do it. And part of the inspiration and the reason for the title of my second book and my podcast, The Journey of My Mother's Son, is you know, a lot of what we're doing is inspired by my mom because back in the 80s, she took an old 1967 Plymouth Valiant, took the back seat out of it, put a sheet of plywood in there and a mattress and turned it into kind of a quasi RV and traveled all around the country doing volunteer work and um, just reconnecting with friends and family and meeting new friends. Uh, She volunteered at at Ground Zero after 9-11. She did a lot of hurricane relief efforts in in Florida after she stopped traveling full-time. So this is a way to kind of, you know, keep her legacy alive. You know, it's when she had passed, I remember, you know, going through some of her journals and and reading about some of her adventures. And as we got this idea to do it, um, I'd been doing some podcasting for our organization at the time. And you know, I thought, you know, how cool would it have been for mom to be able to, you know, share her journey in real time with social media um, if she was doing this today as opposed to in the 80s when that wasn't wasn't quite available. So, uh, you know, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to keep podcasting and, and be able to tell stories of the people that we meet throughout our travels and, you know, just kind of share share along our adventures, so to speak, in this uh, this RV travel. She would be so proud of you. Yeah, that's great. And on your podcast, do you interview people that you meet along the road? I do. I do. And I've, I've interviewed, you know, because obviously we connected through Podmatch. So I use Podmatch as well. And I've been fortunate mm-hmm. enough where I've actually kind of done the reverse, too, where I've met someone virtually like this. And then, you know, I'm going through Fort Wayne, Indiana. And, you know, actually a, a, someone who had hosted me on another podcast, we, I reached out to him. We got together. Um, in Texas, I got together with a couple of my guests on my, that were on my show. So it's kind of worked both ways where I've been able to meet people virtually first and then connect with them in real life later. And then, you know, meeting people in real life and then sitting down and, you know, recording with them or actually setting up a Zoom call down the road um, and recording. I, I do a lot of podcasts with some of my old players who are scattered throughout the country. And, 
I, I, I kind of changed my philosophy on that where initially we would do it when we got together. Um, again, we go back to the RV, sit down, just record it, the show on a phone. Um, and I got to a point where I was like, I felt that was kind of taken away from our time to catch up and be together. So now what I do is I just, you know, schedule a podcast to do over Zoom after we get together. So it doesn't seem like it's as much of a mm -hmm. quote unquote business meeting. We can still catch up and just yeah. enjoy the moment um, and then still tell that story, um, you know, through this technology here, which has been pretty cool. And, and you volunteer nice. as well. What is it you enjoy about giving back and volunteering? You know, again, I, I got to go back to my mom. Um, you know, she, she, her entire life just gave back and volunteered. So, you know, growing up, um, you know, before I started to drive and, you know, started to do stuff on my own, if she was volunteering, I was there with her. There, there wasn't a choice, you know? <laughs> uh, so, um, so that really made an impact on me because as I grew up and became a young man, it just seemed like the thing to do. Like, this is just what you did. It was just kind of, you know, built into me. Um, and my dad, was very giving as well, uh, in a different way though, cause he drove truck, drove, you know, he was an over the road truck driver. So he didn't have the time that my mom had, but he was always very giving financially. So if, you know, if a youth group or a church or something like that needed money, he was more than happy to, to write a check and make a donation. So, you know, from the two of them, it was really just, you know, bred into me that that's what you do is you give back. And, you know, it's amazing to me that when you go into that situation where you're, you go in feeling like you're the giver, you actually come out of it feeling as though you received. And, and I just think that's mm. an amazing feeling. Mm. Nice. That's so true. Nice. Tell us what you enjoy most about full-time RV life. What I enjoy most is just that no, no two days are alike. Um, mm. Whether we're in the same town or whether we, you know, are 200 miles away from where we were yesterday. Um, and this, you know, this country, is such a beautiful country. Um, and the people are amazing. And if you take time to sit down and have conversations with people and especially people who you may not think you have a lot in common with people that, you know, don't look like you or don't, you know, perhaps think like you, uh, maybe not have the same ideologies as you. If you actually sit down, you're going to find out that you actually have a lot more in common with them than what you don't. And that's one of the things I, I love the most about it. Oh, I think a lot of people nice. will be very jealous of you. So many people would really love to just chuck it all and start over and go on the road and, and do it exactly that. Have you heard stories like that at all? I have. Uh, a lot of people say that, you know, where they'll say, hey, you know, when we retire, we want to do this or, or something like that. And, you know, my wife and I always tell them, like, don't wait. Like, if, you, if it's something you want to do, just do it. Um, we don't have a you know, a huge trust fund or anything that we're sitting on. Um, we can kind of figure out ways to make money along the way. Um, you know, so there's so many options, especially now with working, you know, remote work. I mean, if there's a silver lining from COVID, it's proof that you can do a lot of work remotely. And, you know, we've met some really young couples that are full-time RVing. A um, couple that I did a podcast with that are, you know, just out of college and they work remotely and travel full-time. So there's so many options. So, you know, I just tell people, if it's something you want to do, just do it. Mm. Well, what good advice. I used, I used to have an RV and I just loved it. Yeah. I loved it. I would just take very short trips. And uh, but I, I just love being driving it. I love driving it. Mm. It's really fun. Do you drive? You want... Are you the full-time driver or not? Yeah. Yeah. I do probably 99% of the driving. Um my wife will drive kind of rest stop to rest stop at times along the interstate just to give me a little bit of a break. And you know, it's funny, as much as I kind of bust her chops about it at times and I do the bulk of the driving, I actually really enjoy driving. Like that that's one of my favorite parts is just being on the road and just kind of, you know, taking it all in and being able to get off the interstate for a little while and take a, you know, a secondary highway or something like that. And, you know, some of the coolest things we've we've uh, come across were things that we didn't have planned where we were just, you know, on one of those secondary roads and we see a sign for a state park ahead and we decide let's pull in there and check it out. And, you know, turns out we see, you know, amazing, you know, overlook of a gorge and, you know, stuff like that. When we were going through Ohio, uh, traveling along the Lake Erie, 
it was getting close to sunset and we saw a sign for a park just ahead. We pulled in there and, you know, got out in time to see the sunset over Lake Erie. Um, oh, so those yeah. unplanned experiences have been the best for us by far. I bet you have amazing stories. We do. We absolutely do. It, it helps. It helps the writing process. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask you what inspires you to write. So talk about writing and, and the process. So I've, I've written my entire life. I mean, since I was a young boy, uh, it was just something I enjoyed doing. And, uh, you know, I even remember, you know, at 10, 11, 12 years old, uh, writing a newsletter for my brother's adult soccer team, where every mm-hmm. week I would just handwrite this newsletter on notebook paper um, passed out to the wives and girlfriends and the players each Sunday when they'd have their games and, you know, watch them read it and comment on it. And, um, it it was just something I always enjoyed doing. So I, I published my first book in 2012. And then, uh, part of, again, part of what drove this was that, that trip that I took in 2019, I was in the process of adding chapters to that first book, but with my work schedule, it was really tough to sit down and write. And when I got back from those two trips, I'd written like I hadn't written before. And mm-hmm. that was part of what inspired me to say, you know what? I think there's a new chapter here. Um, and again, I, I wasn't, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I wasn't all in initially, you know, like I kind of had this internal battle because, you know, the organization that I had, I had, you know, was working for was an organization I founded, you know, so for 30 years of my life, you know, literally 60% of my life on earth at this point you know, had been dedicated to this one organization. So to really consider walking away from that and opening this new chapter um, was pretty crazy. And like I said, before I even brought it up to my wife, there was kind of an internal battle for me to get on board with it, you know, and there's almost like, you Mm -hmm. know, whether you want to call it the voice of God or the universe or, you know, whatever your belief is, there's, there's definitely a voice telling me it's time to close this chapter and there's a new chapter ahead of you. And, you know, obviously since then, since we've been traveling, I've uh, republished that first book and I've published a book um, each year since we've been traveling. So obviously there is a, an inspiration there in the, in the drive that helps me to write. And you're self-publishing. Yes. Yes. That's a whole other issue. Yeah. 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 And I, That's great. I did use a publisher for the first two, for the republish of the first one and the second one. And, you know, without getting into the gory details, it just wasn't a great experience. So I actually um, pulled my intellectual property from them and republished, self-published at that point and really have, you know, there's one point in my writing career, you could say, where I really wanted to be, you know, working with a publisher. And since that experience, honestly, I'm 100% okay with just, you know, self-publishing, independently publishing and and doing what I'm doing the way I'm doing it right now. And I did notice on your website that your dog has written the yes, book. Yes, he too. has. Yes, he has. That is the <laughs> the most recent one. Uh, it's a children's book. Very talented. Yep. <laughs> children's book called uh, Four Paws and Six Wheels Across America, which is the you know our RV adventures through the the eyes of a 14 year old golden retriever. And oh. <laughs> uh, th- that was really fun to work with. Um, you know, working with uh, an illustrator and having her really make the book come to life. And, uh, you know, him giving me the energy to, you know, to write his words. <laughs> so is a neat Yeah, experience. it looks absolutely adorable, yeah. adorable book. Um, tell us about in your earlier career, what did you enjoy most about coaching? The kids, you know, the relationship with the kids and really, you know, I took on a philosophy of teaching life lessons through the game. It wasn't a win at all cost philosophy, even though we, we did quite a bit of winning. We were very successful in the field. That was never the end goal. You know, it was more about the process. And if we did things the right way, the wins would, would fall into place. And that's probably been one of my you know, biggest rewards is being able to now reconnect with a lot of these guys and girls that I've coached you know, who are now adults and living their own life and seeing that you know, those, seeds, those seeds that were planted so many years ago are really coming to you know, to fruition and, and blooming and blossoming. Um, and that, that's been incredibly rewarding for both me and my wife when we get together with them and you know, just hear what they're doing in the world. You know, um, some of them have been fortunate enough to go on and play professional baseball, um, you know, but even that comes to an end at some point. And, you know, now 
they're out there, they're involved in their communities in different ways, whether it's running the scholarship organization or, you know, doctors and dentists and attorneys. And it, it's just really been a blessing to, to reconnect and see, you know, again, those seeds actually blooming. You've given that sounds wonderful. Yeah, you've given them the seeds to live a very um, rewarding life. It sounds Absolutely. like they have. Absolutely. So, um, what would you tell someone who's considering full time RVing? Like I said before, I would tell them just do it. You know, we we never camped. <laughs> we were not like weekend campers. It's not like we owned an RV for ten years prior to this. Uh, the first time I ever drove an RV was the day we drove ours off the lot, which was actually the same day that the governor of Pennsylvania was issuing the shutdown orders for COVID. Oh. <laughs> you know? um, so again, I'd say just do it. The, the RV community is such a wonderful community that, you know, there's so many things that you can learn along the way. And, and YouTube's a great resource. Um, I'm not the handiest guy in the world. Again, I was a baseball coach, so I can teach you how to hit a fastball, throw a curveball, and how to field a ground ball the right way. But if it comes to tearing something apart and putting it back together, that, that's not me. Um, but yet, I've had some issues with the RV where you know we've been on a volunteer project and some other volunteers have kind of jumped in and not not did it for me, but actually showed me how to do it. So if you would have told me that at one point in our RV journey, I'd be changing out the water pump on our RV, I would tell you you're, you're out of your mind, but I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I've done it successfully because it's still working now. <laughs> a lot of self-reliance. Yeah, no doubt about that. Yeah. Well, do you have some great stories about being on the road? Uh, I mean, there, there's so many, you know, there's, there's so many, um, you know, I, I remember we were, we were in Selma, Alabama, and we were, we were driving from Selma to Montgomery along the same path that they did the march. And we were walking around Selma and came across a, a guy who was sitting there on the corner. It was just the beginning of summer. We started talking to him and he was a, a school teacher and he, uh, his uncles both marched with Dr. King, um, on bloody Sunday. And he would, he was raising money for a scholarship fund at the school by giving you a history of the March in, in Selma. So, you know, for 20 bucks, he, he gave us a history that, you know, was kind of firsthand, you know, handed down to him from his uncles, um, you know, just kind of hearing that and just that exchange was so cool. And I mean, there's just so many stories, um, again, of, of people. That's so met, moving. And, That's so moving. You'll never forget yeah, that. And, and we, were, we were in Memphis one time and we were at a barbecue joint and there was a guy sitting to our left. And I noticed that he gave, um, for his tip, he gave the waitress like four $2 bills or something like that. And that was actually something that, that I do. I would collect $2 bills and wait for a special occasion and give them to someone, whether it was a tip or something like that, which again was something that was handed down to me from my mom. She did the same thing. So this kind of sparked a conversation where I was like, excuse me, I don't mean to pry, <laughs> but what's the story behind the $2 bills? And it just kind of sparked this, this conversation of, you know, again, he just felt it was something special, a, a kind of way to show a little extra gratitude because it's rare uh, to leave someone a tip of $2 bills. And it kind of led down this whole conversation of, you know, telling stories about my mom. And it was just, again, a neat experience and just little stuff like that has been, has been so cool along, along our journey. Mm. I love it. Anything else come to mind? Cause I, I love these stories. Um, boy, like I said, there's, there's so many, and there's so many with, with Uke, you know, anytime we go on a walk or a hike, you know, he, he's the guy who, thinks everyone else on that trail or, or on that walk is there to pet him, you know? So he, he is, the, he is the conversation starter. So there've been so many times we're out on a walk with him. And, um, like I said, he, he just turned 14 back in March and he's oh. in great shape. We still, we still walk about three miles a day. Oh, lucky and, you. uh, you know, so every wow. time we, we stop, we have an exchange, it kind of leads to, you know, yeah, we live in an RV full time and he loves getting out and walking and he just turned 14 and it just, you know, just awesome little connections like that of, you know, people will probably never see again, but, you know, people who I 
won't forget either, you know? Um, so yeah, there's just so many stories. It's, it's just, it's, it's awesome to, you know, and to be able to kind of cherish those moments and recognize them, um, I think is what's been the most special because, you know, before when you're working all, all the time and I put in a lot of hours, you know, so enjoying the moment wasn't really something that I was great at. Um, so now that we're traveling, it's something that I, I definitely recognize a lot more, you know, and, and when we're with friends and family, um, you know, we cherish those small moments even more than we ever did. Right. I was going to ask you about walking your dog, but you answered it without me asking. I love it. <laughs> it was ESP. I, well, I, I have a question yeah. for you because it sounds like you're really living in the moment. So how tough was it for you to embrace that? that life of living in the moment because i think that so many people don't know how um again it took a little while um but you know once we made the decision and you know we put the house in the market that was kind of when things became real and then covid hit and kind of threw a curveball into all of that we actually took our house off the market for a little bit so there was a a time where we had you know a new RV sitting in the yard and a house that was off the market, which was not the plan at all, you know? Mm -hmm. And then yeah. as soon as the housing market opened up again in Pennsylvania, uh, the house sold within 10 days of it being back on the market. And you know, that was really when it kind of became, you know, became real. And um, our first trip was okay. taken, you know, we left Pennsylvania, went, went down into Virginia and then took the Blue Ridge Parkway uh, the entire length down into uh, North Carolina. And I, I think that was probably when we really embra embraced, you know, that living in the moment philosophy, because like, you know, probably every little lookout area that you could stop at on the Blue, <laughs> on the Blue Ridge Parkway, we would stop and get out and just, you know, look out at the horizon and, and you know, enjoy that, that scenery of, you know, endless mountains and, and stuff like that. So, you know, once we hit the road, it probably came pretty quickly, um, you know, because all, all that other stuff was now in the background. And, um, you know, it, it really turns into a stress-free uh, lifestyle. And, you know, again, I don't know that I would have imagined that going into it. You know, we didn't really know exactly what to expect, um, but we have no regrets at this point. Mm, yeah. Sounds fabulous. Yeah. Well, Dan, what would you like our listeners to have as a takeaway today? And I think, you know, the biggest thing is just going on that theme of, of living in the moment and understanding that, you know, sometimes less is more. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people asked me if it was tough for me to, to, you know, sell all of our stuff. And it really wasn't even, uh, you know, I had a, you know, your typical man cave for, you know, a sports guy where I had all kinds of baseball memorabilia in there and, signed yeah. baseballs and bats and photos and stuff like that. And I really had no problem giving up any of that at all. Um, and, mm. and really understanding that, you know, even though society tells us that we're on this hamster wheel and that we should be bye, 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 bye. Um, you know, enjoying experiences and living the moment is so much more valuable than, you know, acquiring material things. And, one of the greatest things for us is, you know, we can go into a gift shop, look around and say, oh, isn't that nice? But we don't have room for it in the RV. So <laughs> let's keep moving. Um, and I guess that's it. It's just, you know, around that theme of, you know, living in the moment and enjoying it and understanding that, you know, we don't know how much time we have on earth. You know, um, sadly, mm -hmm. we've, we've had a lot of people that we've lost since we started traveling. And, you know, a lot of them had plans. I mean, one of my really good friends was talking about how when he retired, he wanted to get an RV and not sell his stuff, but, you know, do a lot of weekend trips with his daughter because she had just gotten an RV a little while ago. And a month before he was scheduled to retire, he, he passed away. Um, and I think just things like that drive home the fact that you really do have to enjoy every single moment because we don't know what we have left. Yeah. How long have your, uh, you and your wife been married? We've been married um, it'll be 28 years in January. We've been, been yeah. together yeah. for 33 yeah. now. Mm. Great. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Congrats, congratulations on all your 
adventure. Thank you. Yeah. You're, it's all worthwhile. It sounds all worthwhile. It is. Thank you so much, Dan. No problem. Our guest today on Late Boomers has been author, podcast host, traveler, Dan Clouser. Visit his website, journeyofmymotherson.com, where you can find his books and all his info. Journeys of My Mother's Son is also the name of his podcast, so go tune in. He's on Instagram at danclauser 5 Thanks again, Dan. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. And we want to remind our listeners to subscribe to our new YouTube channel, Late Boomers Podcast, and to please subscribe on your favorite podcast platform as well. Please follow us on Instagram at I am Kathy Worthington and at I am Mary Elkins and at Late Boomers. Write to us if you'd like on our website, lateboomers.biz, B-I-Z. And we always try to bring you inspiration and entertainment and food for thought. Thanks again, Dan. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Late Boomers the podcast that is your guide to creating a third act with style, power, and impact. Please visit our website and get in touch with us at lateboomers.biz. If you would like to listen to or download other episodes of Late Boomers, go to ewnpodcastnetwork.com. This podcast is also available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and most other major podcast sites. We hope you make use of the wisdom you've gained here and that you enjoy a successful third act with your own style, power, and impact.